In this video, I'm going to give a brief interactive, uh, brief tutorial of an interactive session with the XFOIL airflow design and analysis software that you'll need to use to complete the airflow design project. So to start, I'll launch the program by typing XFOIL in the command window. In the main screen of the program, the commands to use at the top level menu are available. We're going to start by loading in a NACA four digit series airfoil. To do that, we type NACA and then the four digits. So, for example, 3315. This then gives some information on the description uh, of the geometry. So we have 15% thickness, that's located at 30% cord, and also 3% camber at 30% cord. The paneling, and this is a, a panel method code, uh, details are given as well. To smooth out the paneling, it's possible to use a command, which I'll show you in a second, but to see what the current panel distribution looks like, you can simply type P-L-O-P. Sorry, wrong command. PPAR. So this shows the current panel distribution on the airfoil. We don't want to change anything in this menu, so we'll just go back. Now we're at the root menu again. You can always Type the question mark to get a list of possible commands. Typing the pane command will smooth the paneling based on the airflow curvature. So if we plot again, we see for this little airfoil, it hasn't changed. If you've done a custom airfoil loaded in, it's possible that the, using the pane command would give you a better uh, distribution of panels and therefore a faster, more stable solution. The most basic thing that you typically want to do is do some direct operating point analysis. But before we do that, I want to show you how you can find out uh, some basic structural properties of the airfoil by typing the bend command. This includes critical information like the cross-sectional area, as well as structural parameters. For the purposes of our airfoil project, it's this area that's an important output. Now, let's directly set operating points by going into the upper menu. Here, we see an I, which indicates we're in inviscid analysis mode. If we type a question mark to get the list of commands, see that the first command is visc. So this now will put us in inviscid analysis mode, which requires us to set a Reynolds number. For example, 100,000. Then you can see that the Mach number is currently set to zero, which means that the flow is incompressible, and the Reynolds number is set to the desired value of 100,000. If we wanted to set a Mach number, we would just use the Mach command and then edit the value is appropriate. For example, we might set a Mach number of 0 0.1. So now we have the Mach number and the Reynolds number set. We're ready to analyze the flow over this airfoil. So to do that, at a single angle of attack, we can use the alpha command, which provides a single angle. So since this is a cambered airfoil, there'll be lift at zero angle attack. So let's see how much and just do alpha zero, and these angles are in degrees. So this is the result for this NACA 3315 at Mach 0.1, Reynolds number of 100,000, and alpha is the angle of attack of zero. We get a lift coefficient of 0.645, sorry, 0.465, moment coefficient is negative 0 0.0878, and the drag coefficient is 0 0.0169. 
the lift to drag ratio for the airfoil is given here as 27.7. .7. NCR is a parameter related to uh, how XFOIL determines when the flow transitions from laminar to turbulent flow, and it's not something that we're going to need to change here. To see whether this has happened, we can go back to the command window and look at the final iteration of the solution. And we can see that side one, which is the top side of the airfoil, has free transition at 73.4% cord. What that means is that the internal criteria that determines whether the flow is laminar or turbulent has triggered a transition to turbulent flow at that location. On the bottom side, we see forced transition at x over c equals 1. Essentially, that means that there were, the flow remained laminar over the entire bottom surface. In the text values of the returned values uh, are here, lift coefficient, angle of attack, moment coefficient, drag coefficient. The drag coefficient is further subdivided into skin friction drag and pressure drag, as we discussed in lecture. Looking further at this plot, what we get are two pictures. The main picture is a pr pressure coefficient. Note that the vertical axis is inverted so that one, the maximum possible value indicating a stagnation point is at the bottom and decreasing values which in correspond to increasing velocity go up. No x scale is given as by default the airflow has a chord of one unit and so this axis just goes from zero to one. The blue and red curves correspond to the pressure coefficient distributions on the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil. The dashed lines that you see that closely parallel but are not exactly the same as the blue and red lines are the inviscid pressure distributions. This is the answer you would get for an equivalent inviscid flow. And so you can see the effects of viscosity uh, on cha as, as, as changing the pressure distribution, particularly in this region where the transition to turbulence takes place. At the bottom, what's shown is the airfoil itself, and the blue and red curves correspond to the displacement thickness, which is a way of measuring how much the presence of the boundary layer effectively changes the geometry of the body. And the way that this code works is that there's a coupling between the boundary layer solution and the exterior, exterior inviscid panel solution. And basically, the airfoil geometry is changed to become this blue and red curve. So the displacement thickness essentially defines a new airfoil as far as the outside potential flow is concerned. If we want to see how the angle of attack uh, affects the lift coefficient over some range, we can look at a polar. So a polar is essentially a locus of uh, typically lift coefficient versus drag coefficient for a series of angles of attack. We can set that up in the following way. By using the PAC command, we can automatically accumulate any data points that we plot into the active polar. So we can save this data to a file or just keep it in memory. In this case, I won't save it to a file, and so I'll just hit enter. Note now that in addition to the V that indicates viscous mode, there's now an A, meaning that we're in accumulation mode. Now, if we want to get the performance over a range of angles of attack, instead of plotting each one individually using the alpha command, we can do a alpha sequence. So if we do the alpha sequence command, the first alpha value, let's say, negative 5 degrees, and the last alpha value, perhaps, 15 degrees, and then we choose an increment, let's say, 1 degree. 
Solutions are obtained for all of the points, which are plotted simultaneously. This isn't all that useful to look at, but it shows you that the work has been done. Now, we can have a look at the resultant polars. So using the Kiplo command, which is polar plot, we generate this figure. So the figure indicates the airfoil name, the Reynolds number, Mach number, and again the critical parameter for transition to turbulent flow. And what we get here are three plots. On the left we have uh, what we call a typical drag polar, which is lift coefficient versus drag coefficient. Note that the axis for drag coefficient is greatly exaggerated by a factor of 10,000. These plots are a bit strange in that the red curve corresponds to our results and often this will actually be off of the graph. I'll show you in a moment how you can adjust the bounds on these graphs so that the plot looks a little bit more normal. Then we have the lift coefficient versus angle of attack on this curve as well as the moment coefficient. Finally, here we have the lift coefficient or sorry on this curve what we have is the transition location uh, as a function of the lift coefficient. So if we wanted to clean these plots up we could do something like the following using the polar plot axes command we can set the minimum value of angle of attack so we should set it to the range that we use and then you can set a delta which indicates where these interim numbers will be plotted so let's say three degrees four degrees same thing for the lift coefficient we can go from perhaps negative 1 to 1.5 it's up to 0 0.5 and for the drag coefficient similarly we can go from 0 to 0 0.1 in steps of 0 0.02 the moment coefficient is already on the plot so we'll actually leave that as it is. Then if we run the plot command again we see that now each plot is self-contained and the curves are no longer jumping <laughs> off of the plots. So this plot here is, gives us some information about turbulence transition and its effect on the performance of the airfoil and this is not going to be primarily of interest uh, for you in this project. These two plots on the other hand are very important. In particular, we need to know that we're at an efficient operating point for the airfoil. That means a high lift over drag or CL over CD. So you can think of CL over CD as simply being the slope of this line and you basically want this slope to be as steep as possible and that's going to occur in this region where this curve is as close to vertical as possible uh, so basically you're looking for the bottom of this curve if you think of this as the bottom so if your airfoil ends up not being in this region while it may satisfy design criteria it's not an efficient operating point for that airfoil and therefore possibly not the best solution the lift coefficient here you see we get the maximum lift coefficient uh, from this plot and the moment coefficient comes in as well though that's not as relevant for what you need to do here to exit polar accumulation mode we can just type kiak again now we're back to the regular operating mode Now, let's look at some of the ways that we might be able to modify uh, an airfoil 
if it doesn't meet our requirements. So one of the first things that one can do is interpolate two air between two airfoils. This requires first writing the current airfoil to disk. So we can use, do that using the save command. So we can save temp airfoil. Then we can set a different NACA airfoil, perhaps a 2320 which looks like this. And we can interpolate between this and the previous airflow using the intip command. So for our first one, we'll say from a file from disk, in this case, the, pol the previous airflow is still loaded because its information is present in the polar. But if this hadn't been done, we would have to load it from disk. So we'll do that. And the name of the file is temp airfoil. And then the second airfoil is the current airfoil. Now we must specify a linear interpolation fraction. So let's say 0 0.5 to go halfway between the two. We have to enter a name for the new airfoil after some data is given on its max thickness and camber. And their locations, and the new airfoil name here we'll call uh, mod one, modified airfoil one. So now we're going to follow instructions and execute PCOP to set the new current airfoil to be this one. And using pane, we can smooth it and then have a look at the result. Now if we go back into the open menu, note that the Reynolds number and Mach number have been retained. Now let's accumulate another polar. Again, we won't bother saving this. And do the same range of a sequence of angles of attack from minus 5 to 15 degrees in increments of 1 degree. And plot this again with the pplot command. Now the program intelligently realizes we have two polars loaded and plots both, and so we can immediately see the impact of the change in geometry on the airfoil performance. Here we can see that while the peak CL has decreased for the modified airfoil, the angle of attack for maximum uh, lift has actually increased. Also, we can see looking at the drag polar, the drag is higher at high lift coefficients and lower at very low negative lift coefficients. So overall, this is not actually a great airfoil, it's not much of an improvement. If we wanted to zoom in on part of this plot, we can use the ppx command to more carefully compare between the two. We won't change the alpha range uh, or the CL range, but we can change the CD range from perhaps uh, 0.01 to 0.04 with steps of 0.01. And then if we replot, we've now zoomed in on this region and we can see that indeed the minimum drag for the interpolated airflow is in fact much higher than that for the original airflow and occurs at a much lower value of lift. So overall we would say that this modified airflow is less efficient than the original NACA 3315. Okay. Another way that you can modify an airfoil 
is using one of three design routines. MDES and QDES are speed-based design routines which allow you to specify essentially the pressure distribution in MDES over the entire airfoil or in QDES over a marked specific region of the airfoil. GDES is different in that it just allows you to directly modify the airfoil geometry. We're going to look at GDES here. So to start we're shown a picture of the current airfoil. And here's a list of all of the commands that can be executed. So for example, things that we might want to do is move the thickness and camber high points. So if we type the high command, we can change the thickness high point from x being 0.3 to perhaps being 0.4 and we can change the camber high point from being 0.3 to 0.25. The modified airflow is then shown. If we wanted to look at what the impact of these, uh, these, these changes are on the geometry here, we also have access to the bend command and can look at the enclosed area. If we're happy with this, we can exec, and now the current airfoil is set to the one we've been working on. Now we could go back into OPER, we could accumulate yet a third polar and do another sequence of angles of attack. Here, we see that at the highest angle of attack, convergence has failed, and so this is probably beyond the stalling point for this airfoil. Nevertheless, we can look at the results in the polar plot, and here we see dramatically different behavior for this modified airfoil. In particular, it wasn't able to converge at the highest angle of attack. The drag behavior is very different. In fact, this is very strange and might indicate that the flow didn't converge at low angles of attack either. This would require more careful investigation. While this is a poor design, overall this indicates the types of capabilities that you have to change the airfoil geometry. The two really main tools are interpolating between two airfoils and direct geometry modification using GDES. Full descriptions of the capabilities of all of these modules are available in the documentation, which has also been posted online. As a starting point, I recommend using the tutorial from Purdue University. It's also been posted on the Clue course website.